Hello everyone, in this video, let's go through some logistic regression. So the goal of regression in general is to draw a line through a cloud of data points that best fit the data. And with linear regression, we're going to confine it to be a specific form like theta one X plus theta zero, or any form that's just linear in terms of these parameters. And what we'll end up with right now, at least in this form, is just like a straight line that's gonna look something like this. Now, one of the properties of this line over here is that this Y variable is going to be normally distributed. And what this actually implies is that like for every given value of X, let's just say that right here, for example, in this given value, of X, we're gonna see that there's a lot of data points that are clustered around some region and a few data points constrained around the sides such that, you know, the distribution will look like a bell curve. And we can say this basically about any point of X. So for every Y given X, we'll kind of see that the distribution follows a bell curve. And this distribution is going to be such that the mean of this distribution is essentially going to coincide with exactly our prediction. So what we're predicting here is like theta one X plus theta zero and a sigma squared as a variance. I've explained a lot of these details in another video, so please do check that out for more info. But what if now the response variable Y was not normally distributed for some given value of X? And what if they were, for example, Let's say it looked like this, our data, where it's a binary classification where Y can only take on two values of zero and one. In this case, well, we can say that Y is Bernoulli distributed and the parameter for a Bernoulli distribution is just P, which is like the probability that Y is equal to one for a given value of X. Now, in this situation, how are we going to map this linear equation into a Bernoulli variable? I mean, after all, if we were to just plot this out, we would probably get some curve right now that looks like this. But this curve, of course, that theta one X plus theta zero, it takes on values of Y that simply don't make sense for our context. And so we would need to perform some sort of squishification where we take the function of this linear equation and this will effectively squish it to a value that lies between zero and one. And typically for logistic regression, we find that a good squishification function is one over one plus e to the negative theta one x plus theta zero. And this is specifically the sigmoid function that we see so often in logistic regression. And what that'll kind of look like is something like this. And this is a value that's going to effectively then lie between zero and one. So for a better visual though, we can actually look at this in a graphing calculator. So we have this equation here where it's T is just a linear equation and that's going to be the red line over here. And each value of the red line is now going to be mapped to the sigmoid function. And so I can kind of play around with how, if I affect theta zero, it's going to move it left and right, the function itself, whereas theta one is going to kind of make the function a little expanded. And so you can kind of see how the sigmoid function behaves. But regardless of the value of theta, you can see that the value of the y-axis is always going to be between zero and one. Now, linear regression and logistic regression share some commonalities, but also some differences that I wanted to highlight in this section. Here are four assumptions that linear regression makes. So the linearity with respect to parameters. Now this helps linear regression contain a closed form solution because with linearity of parameters, we can take derivatives with respect to theta zero and theta one, get linear equations and solve them with linear algebra manually. And so they have a closed form solution. But logistic regression, on the other hand, has no known closed form solution. And this is primarily because with logistic regression, we are dealing with a sigmoid function, which when you take the derivatives of in like the maximum likelihood estimation, you'll notice that they cannot be solved with simple linear algebra. 
And so we're gonna have to resort to optimization techniques like gradient descent in order to solve for the parameters of logistic regression. The next is the independence of residuals. All in all, this assumption still holds true. But, and what this means is that for every single value that comes, let's say, along this value of x, any value of these white points are going to be independent of each other. Now, normal distribution of residuals. Well, while the residuals of linear regression are normally distributed, and this bubbles up to be that the response variable is normally distributed, this is not necessarily the case for logistic regression. Logistic regression does not have to have normal residuals, and the response variable is Bernoulli distributed. Bernoulli y. Next, we have an equal variance. What this means in linear regression is that the width of each of these blue curves is going to be exactly the same. They're gonna have the same variance for every value of x. But that term actually does not exist in the Bernoulli distribution, and so we kind of just eliminate it. Now we can further see that how all of these linear models are kind of more related to each other. So first of all, we have the distribution of the response variable can take multiple forms. So for example, if the distribution is a normal distribution, then we can perform a linear regression on it. If the distribution is Bernoulli, well, we can perform logistic regression and so on. Now the normal distribution, Bernoulli, Poisson, and Gamma, all of them fall under the same category of the exponential family of distributions. And all of these models over here that we could come up with, all of them fall under the category of generalized linear models. So all of these will essentially perform some transformation on the typical linear equation to get some nonlinear form in order to solve different types of problems. So for example, linear regression is great for regression-based problems, logistic regression for classification, Poisson can be for modeling counts, and survival analysis can be for modeling time till death, for example. From this section, now we're going to get a little more into the weeds of why exactly we use sigmoid function in logistic regression. So here is the general form of the exponential family of distributions, where we have h and t, which are functions of the response variable y, and then we have this eta and a, which are functions of the Bernoulli parameter, probability of success, which I've called p. Now, this in general can be like different for different types of distributions. So for the normal distribution, this p would be the vector of mean and variance. When determining our function of interest, which is related to the link function, we are really just concerned with this eta p. And for generalized linear models, this eta p will take a linear form. So let's try to solve this case for logistic regression. Now our response variable in logistic regression is Bernoulli. And in the Bernoulli distribution case, the probability mass function takes on this form. And I'm just going to be transforming it here into a form that's similar to the exponential family distribution in order to find the value of eta, which is our object of interest here. And funny enough here, this eta looks like it takes on the log odds form because it's a log of probability of success to the probability of failure. And we know that for generalized linear models, this can be equated to a linear form. And so doing a little bit of math, we get the probability of success p as a sigmoid function, which will lie between zero and one, as we saw in our graphing calculator. So why exactly are we con computing just p? Why is that specifically an object of interest? Well, it's because that in general for regression problems and for linear models in general, I would say, is that when we're making a prediction, we typically predict the mean. And in the, case of nor in the case of linear regression, the mean is this theta 1x plus theta 0, which is always along this yellow line. And the similar case is for, well, logistic regression. We're always going to want to predict the mean. And the mean for a Bernoulli distribution, which we typically call E of, let's say, yi given xi, this is going to be p itself it's going to be the value of the probability of success. And so whatever we determine the value of P to be, that is going to be the value that we predict for every single point 
at of here. I hope all of this is super clear. I do a lot of research before doing these videos, but there are times where it may or may not be correct. And so please do call it out in the comments below. Let's have a discussion and let's all learn together. And that's kind of what I want this community to be. So thank you all so much for watching and I will see you with another video very soon. Goodbye.